Hello, welcome to Daily Planet. I'm Jay Ingram. And I'm Natasha Stilwell. On the program today, we have the science of airtime. How freestylers perfect the arc. And the latest in cyborg wear. Glasses with a different perspective. Plus, all you need to know about stars from the global picture to the precautions you should take. But first, winter's over, but there's still some snow. And where there's snow, there's skiing. Mark Miller went searching for science at the Canadian Freestyle Championships in Penticton, British Columbia. Triple! Woo! Yeah! Aerial freestyle. It is one of the most spectacular winter sports. Woo! Skis. Spins. And spills. He's hurt. Freestyle skiing requires courage, confidence, and a passion for attempting the impossible. <laughs> it seems a risky sport, so what's the payoff? You know, it's like you're in, in space, you know? There's no gravity, you're just in the air floating. It lasts only two or three seconds, but it's worth, well, you know, it's worth it. And then when you land, if you land on your feet and you stick it, it's the best thing in the world. Okay, so it's a pretty cool looking sport. Big air, big flips, occasionally a big crash. But there's more going on here than meets the eye. You see, if you want to survive or even excel in the sport of aerials, you better have a pretty good idea of what's going on in the science of airtime. These are some of the best aerial athletes on the planet. Four-time world champion Nicholas Fontaine, Olympic medalist Veronica Brenner, Steve Omashaw, all of them amateur athletes and experts in the physics of flight. You know, it's a formula. Your speed coming in, the angle of the jump, how big the jump is, and what we try and do is to stay perpendicular to the curve and follow it off. And with the right speed, you're going to do three flips straight. Everything at the competition site is measured to exacting detail. The formula never changes. The height of the jumps. Example, our jump right now is 4.1 meters tall. The angle of takeoff. There's about a uh, 65 to 70 degree um, incline. So you're getting great height, max height, but you're also getting the trajectory that you need. If you if you end up having too steep of a jump, you're going to have great height, but you're not going to have the, the right trajectory to, to follow you, to carry you down the hill. With safety in mind, it takes up to two days to prepare the site. Francois Jean has spent hours making sure the arc of this jump is as smooth as possible. We take measurement every like two feet, make sure it's the most similar every time, like as much as we can. A level is used to make sure the arc is perfect. Each section of this jump has an angle assigned to it. The higher up the jump, the steeper the angle. Actually, it's about three degrees difference in between each two foot. And for sure, we're going to go back, try to look, you know. Scrapers are constantly used throughout the day to trim the snow and to keep the jump shape. Difficult because just before the contest, you just do a retouching. You cannot reshape everything. It takes an hour. So we're just going to fix it the best we can. and. Hopefully it's going to last for the event. The in-run is also important. It's pretty nice. 61.4. Before anyone jumps, speeds are measured with the radar gun. 61.6, man. She knows that she needs two more kilometers. She's going to take a step up. So it's, it's that precise. By starting further up the ski hill, the athletes will try to factor out the wet, slow snow here but there are variables that they can't control. As the competition gets underway, Can you see wind it? becomes a potential problem. That's up in the transition. He felt the wind. He didn't think he had enough speed. He made a judgment call to stop, go back up, and, and do it again because he didn't think it was safe. He probably didn't think he was going to do a good jump and land. He's going to get penalized for that a few points. But that being said, it's, it's worth the sacrifice because he knew when he stood up, he said, I don't have enough speed, I'm going to crash. You're okay. Pull it in a bit. Pull it. Now, all of this is great to watch, but if the athletes want to live and talk about what they've accomplished, they must land their jumps. Imagine coming down from a five-story building. It sounds like a recipe for serious injury. But not if you've got your physics right. Because our landing hill is 37 degrees um, steep, what happens is 
when you land, it dissipates your fall. So if, like, if, if you could imagine landing on something that's more shallow, that's a huge impact. So, you know, the steepest of the hill you know, takes away a lot of the impact. Yeah! All right, Steve is on course, ladies and gentlemen. Bo, bo, bo. For Steve Omershow, getting the formula right pays off. A triple twisting triple and a He walks away with the win and an A-plus in the science of airtime. Wow. And in case you wondered, freestylers land with a force equal to jumping off the roof of a two-story house. That's because of their tight, short arc. Ski jumpers, on the other hand, use a long and shallow arc. They stay in the air longer, but they're never as high off the ground. So they land with a force equal to jumping off a one-meter ladder. So now you know.